Hi, in this project we will learn how to interface a 4 into 4 keypad with an Arduino and hence create a simple calculator. This is a 4 into 4 generic keypad. It has 8 pins on it and 16 buttons. The 8 pins on the keypad represent the 4 rows and 4 columns. So how do we figure out which button has been pushed? So for example, if this button has been pushed, what we are going to do is set the row to 5 volts and set the column as an input. So when the button is pushed, the column corresponding to that button, which is C2 in this case, will give a high input. So based on which row has the 5 volts and which column gives the input, we can figure out which button has been pressed. And for this project of our calculator, we want our keypad to have these particular values, the numbers, the symbols and the C stands for clear here and 0 equal to minus etc in this specific pattern. Let's now move on to the circuit diagram. This is our circuit diagram. We are also using an I2C LCD in order to display our output. So starting with the connections of our keypad, our first four pins represent the columns starting from C4 to C1. So we are going to connect C4 to pin 6, C3 to pin 7, C2 to pin 8 and C1 to pin 9. The next four pins on the bottom are row pins. We are going to connect row 1 to pin 10, row 2 to pin 11, row 3 to pin 12 and row 4 to pin number 13 of the Arduino. Moving on to the LCD connection. The ground goes to the ground pin of the Arduino. The VCC goes to the 5 volts pin of the Arduino. STA goes to the analog pin 4 of the Arduino and SCL goes to analog pin 5 of the Arduino. Moving on, this is the code we are going to use to create our calculator. First we have to include the following libraries, keypad and liquid crystal I2C. Links to download the zip file of these libraries are given in the description below. Once you have downloaded the zip files, you can go to sketch, include library and add zip library. This adds the library to your list of Arduino libraries. Next, we are creating the instance for our LCD. So we do that by first invoking the library and then creating a variable and under brackets we are going to give the address, the number of columns and number of rows of our LCD. After this we are initializing two byte values called rows and calls with four as their values each. This represents the number of rows and number of columns of our keypad. After that we are going to go ahead and create a two dimensional array which has four rows and four columns and we are going to give a character input of all the numbers and all the operators that we had decided to put previously on our calculator in their exact order. For example, we need 7, 8, 9 and divide on our first row. We need uh, 4, 5, 6 and multiply on our second row and so on. Again, these are all character values and not integer values. Next, we are going to create an array for our row pins, instead of mentioning row 1 is connected to pin 10, row 2 to 11 and etc, we are just going to create a simple array called row pins and column pins. So now if we put row pins of 0, that is our first row which is going to be 10, row pins of 1 which is going to be our second row is 11 and so on. And similarly for the call pins. Now what we want to do next is to integrate row pins and call pins with the two dimensional matrix that has been created above and that is done with this piece of code. Using this, we are going to map our row pins and our call pins right here to the two dimensional array that we have created consisting of all the values we require in their specific order. Next, we are going to initialize a few values. First, we are initiating three boolean values as you know, booleans can take only two values, true or false. So, we are setting the variables present value, next and final as false. Next, we are going to create a string of num1 and num2 which are going to be our input numbers. We are creating a float called answer. And finally, a character op which takes the operators. 
Under setup, we're going to set up our LCD. First, we're going to initialize it. We're going to set our cursor to the zeroth column and zeroth row and print the word calculator. Then we're setting our cursor to zeroth column and first row and printing enter your numbers. We're delaying that by five seconds and then clearing everything on the LCD. So under the loop, we are going to get the value our loop basically consists of if else statements so every time we enter a value it will enter one of these if statements complete the code inside it and then the loop starts all over again and takes our next input so let's say i want to enter the value 51 so i'm going to enter the value 5 first notice the first if condition if key not equal to no key which means when a key has been entered and under brackets, the key e either equal to 1 or 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and so on till 0. So basically if a number is entered, it's going to enter this if condition. Since we have initialized our present value to be false, it is going to enter this if condition. Under this condition, it is going to add the key which I have given that is 5 to the string num1. So basically a concatenation happens since num1 is an empty string, the key is going to be the num1. Next we are taking the length of our string num1 which is 1 and we are going to set the LCD cursor to 15 minus 1. This is to adjust a white space for our operator. So our number is going to take the 14th column and the 15th column is going to be reserved for the operator. Once it is out of this condition, the rest of the loop consists of else or else if codes and hence we are going back to the beginning of the loop. We are going to take another input. The example I had given was 51. So we have entered 5. Next I am going to enter the value 1. It is going to enter the same if condition and under that since present value is still false, it is going to enter this if condition. Num1 is going to become string 5 plus string 1 which is string 51. And now with this num1, it's going to execute the same code. Next, we are going to give our operator. And since this is not equal to the characters 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on, it is going to move on to this else if condition, where present value is still equal to false and there is a key input. And the key value equals slash star minus or plus. Under this, we have an if condition that if present value equals equals false which it is it is going to change that and put present value equals true now its boolean value has changed next the character op we had initialized is going to take the value of the key that has been input for example if we take the slash key character op equals slash next we are going to set the cursor at 15 comma 0 the space we had left for the operator in our previous if condition and then print it out on the LCD. Next again we are going to the beginning of the loop, we are going to get a key and this time it's going to be our second number. So under the first if condition which has been programmed for numbers, this particular if condition underneath says present value not equals true. But after setting the operator we had changed the value to true so we are going to use the else here. Under this we have our num2 which is going to be concatenated with our key and then we are going to take its length, set the cursor to 15 minus length in the first row and then print num2 and change the boolean value of the variable final which we had previously set as false to now be equal to true. Now if I want to enter a second digit to my second number, it's going to take the input again over here. It is going to get into this if loop because it is a number value. Under that it is going into this else condition as present value is equal to true. String num2 is going to concatenate the second digit. And then we are going to take the num length again. And print it onto our LCD by setting the cursor to 15 minus num length at the first row. And at the end, final is again set to the value true. After that, we are going to enter the equal sign as our key. Once that is taken, 
it cannot enter the first if condition because it's not a number character it cannot enter the first else if condition because it's not any of those characters so it is going to enter the second else if condition as finally equals true there is a key entered and the key is equal to under this we are going to convert our string values of num1 and num2 to float values so if the operator is a plus character the answer is going to be num1 dot to float plus num2 dot to float which adds the float values of the two numbers and if the operator is minus it's going to subtract them if the operator is a star it's going to multiply them and if the operator is a slash it's going to divide them once we get our answer we're going to clear our lcd we're going to set the cursor to 15 comma 0 we're going to auto scroll which moves all the text one space to the left every time a letter or a number is added then we're going to print the answer and then we're going to stop the auto scroll so now we get our answer displayed on our lcd it's going to go back to the beginning of the loop but since all the boolean values have been changed the loop will not be able to execute unless everything has been reset this we do by entering c so once we enter c the final else if condition is executed here we first clear everything on the lcd and then we set present value back to false we set final back to false num1 and num2 are set back to empty strings again the answer is set back to zero and the operator is also an empty character now this marks the end of the code once we are done with that we are going to verify and upload our code onto the circuit so let's see the output once uploaded it is going to show this text for five seconds exactly now i'm going to enter the values one space is always reserved for the operator so once i give equal to it is going to give the answer in a float value now i'm going to give clear it's going to clear everything i'm going to give my second set of values this time let's try divide So that's all for this video, the codes are in the description below and thank you.